So over to you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thanks, Rex. Um, Rex had actually asked me to do an opening session this morning, and unfortunately, because of a, a dialing conflict, I wasn't able to do that. So I've just come along just to speak for about five minutes uh, this afternoon. And uh, I'm really pleased that you know Rex has organised this because it's all part of you know Birmingham's green agenda, in effect, uh, around promoting different forms of, of green energy. Now the We've done a lot of work over that in the last seven or eight years, um, but the, I think the most significant thing I want to draw to everyone's attention is that we had local council elections in May this year. Um, there's actually now been a change of, of political administration, so we moved from a Conservative Liberal Democrat control to a Labour controlled administration. Um, now, the reason for mentioning that is that the, the council actually um, approved a policy statement uh, just this month um, where the leader of the council went to the full city council and said what are the key priorities for Birmingham over the period of the administration. And one of the things that has been talked about is actually making Birmingham a greener city than it is now. So building on what has already been achieved but taking it much further forward. And one of the ways uh, that is going to, to happen on that is to look at the, uh, the target that we've set ourselves, which was a 60% cut in carbon emissions by 2026, and actually see, well, actually, how are we going to deliver that? Uh, because it's always been an aspirational target. There haven't been clear delivery mechanisms to help to achieve that. So that's a big uh, challenge. Now, the way that that's going to be tackled is by setting up a new Green Commission for Birmingham. And that will be chaired by a new cabinet member. Uh, and we've got a cabinet member now called Green Safe and Smart City. So it's actually focusing on delivering an outcome of Birmingham being a green city, which is quite different from the way that political structures have been in the past, which is focused around uh, silos, if I can call them that, in effect, directorate silos or departmental silos, where a cabinet member might be seen as a cabinet member for transport and development. In this case, it's focusing on an outcome. So that's quite significant. Um, and that cabinet member is Councillor James Mackay. And the other uh, important message there is he's a young member. Um, so we're not dealing with you know, older members. So, yeah. <laughs> I know there are some very, you know, very dynamic older people. <laughs> but I think, I think it, for, for, from the council's point of view, I think it's really important to get young blood in making decisions because that's the city, the green city of the future. That's where we're going to come from. So the, the membership of that Green Commission will be announced fairly shortly. Now, alongside that Green Commission, there are some very clear priorities that were set down by the leader of the council. Um, one is to uh, continue the work of developing the Birmingham Energy Savers Programme on building retrofit. Um, and that is a, a, a sort of a leading edge programme on retrofit, looking at insulation, uh, renewables, across all properties within the city. Uh, and in fact, it will be one of the first Green Deal programmes up and running when the government actually gets the Green Deal legislation through Parliament. And we're in the process of identifying and selecting a, what we call a delivery partner for that programme, uh, which would then deliver a £1.5 billion programme on retrofit. So that's quite, that's quite significant. The other uh, priority is to create a proper energy plan for the city. So in terms of the inf energy infrastructure networks, the power, the gas, the heat, the cooling, do we understand what those all are? We're already in discussions with our key infrastructure providers, which is Western Power and Distribution, National Grid, to make that out. But importantly then to look at how do we manage the demand for energy down, but also how much energy can we as a city create from different sources? 
So as well as solar, how much can we generate from biomass, from energy, from waste, etc. So there are opportunities to do things there. And that's linked into a different approach to managing the city's waste. Um, at the moment, the council has a contract with Veolia, which ends in 2019, to collect all the domestic waste. Um, there will be a, a major review looking at the city, how the city manages its total waste agenda to ensure that it actually delivers a green approach, not just purely can we collect a black bag and dispose of it. So it's going to have to have a, a different approach uh, to that. Um, and uh, the other uh, couple of aspects I just want to mention is that uh, Alongside looking at it from an energy <coughs> point of view, it's also about how do we look after the city's natural environment in terms of green spaces, water spaces, biodiversity. Um, we've already started work on a, a, a green infrastructure uh, plan. And in fact, we started the consultation process on that just earlier this month through one of our uh, regular sustainability forums and there will be a proper public consultation on that starting in, in July this year uh, with a view to then getting that formally adopted by the end of the year. And that will also underpin new sustainable development planning guidance which will guide future developments and investments to adopt proper sustainable development principles. Uh, now we had a six week consultation period on that draft document during February, March this year. We're looking at all the comments that we have back and we'll then be going back to the cabinet of the council, which will have to agree the document uh, in the uh, late autumn, early winter of this year to get that document adopted. Now that's going to be quite important because it's going to send signals out to developers and investors that if you want to invest in Bern, you've got to adopt these green principles. Um, and that will include, um, can you build forms of renewable energy into development, connections to distribute systems, uh, what are you doing with waste, uh, how are you dealing with transport, you know, both for your employees but also for customers to develop, and so on. So this is a, adopting a much um, more coordinated and integrated um, approach um, and that's reflected if I come back to uh, the political changes of the council that's reflected in the way that uh, the new leadership of the council wants the cabinet members to work he doesn't want them to work in silos he wants them to work collaboratively because it's important when dealing with big issues for the city of which the green agenda is clearly one of them which is how do you get different parts of the council to collaborate better than they've done in the past. So there's a lot of actually very good projects, very good individual projects, there's actually a lot of good council staff, we do a lot of collaboration and working with external partners, but is it all joined up, does it actually work? And that's one of the uh, challenges that this new Green Commission will also look at. What are the mechanisms that exist? Can they be rationalised, can they be better organised, be clear about which person, which organisation needs to lead and actually give them greater authority to be able to lead to make a change. Um, so I don't really want to say much more than that. All, all I would say really is that we're, I think, we're, Birmingham's actually starting out on potentially a really exciting green journey now. Uh, and I think for the first time, um, I better be careful what I'm saying here, <laughs> but, uh, because um, I have to say that you know, there have been certain key political champions in previous administrations dealing with the Green Agenda, um, uh, and the two key ones have been Councillor Paul Tursley and Councillor Tim Huxtable. They've been very strong Green champions, but it, it's never felt having worked within the council for a long time, it's never felt that the green agenda is actually right at the heart of where the council wants Birmingham to be. Um, and I'm taking the policy statement at its face value, given that it's got the full backing of the leader and the full backing from his whole cabinet, 
that this is where he wants Birmingham to be, you know, which is to really be a green leading city and to get on and do it. So I hope that Thank gives you a bit of an Okay. Yeah. I'll just say I'm, I'm afraid I can't stay for the rest of the discussion. I know. You're going to get your green city, yeah. yeah. But as I said, let's not talk about it, let's do it. Huh? Um, because it, that's, what, uh, that's what people desperately want. There's all the goodwill out there. Yeah. And all they want to see is some real change and some real possibility to move. And uh, okay. good luck. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, thank you very much, Anthony. Uh, uh, one of the models, in fact, did involve the canals and, and the waste uh, movement of waste around the city and, and, uh, and targeted uh, points where they would go to make syn gas and the hydrogen is one of the options there too. So uh, it does feature uh, somewhere in there, I think, and will hopefully feature more. Okay, so now over to another real project.